Hi there, happy fall! Today I'm going to be binding a sewing manual that was originally published in 1895. Um, I believe there was a second publishing of it that was in 1898, but I could be wrong. Um, it is the Keystone Jacket and Dress Cutter Guide. Um, however, I have printed it and folded it because I would like to bind it into an actual book. Um, <clears throat> just because I'm not a huge fan of using like just sheets of paper everywhere, they always get in the wrong order and kind of drives me crazy. So um, being a gigantic nerd and someone who really loves old things, um, I actually wanted to see if case binding was something period accurate for when this well, it was technically a magazine, but when this book was actually published in 1895, um, so I looked up, <laughs> I looked it up and it was, which is awesome. Um, I believe it was actually done in 1830 or maybe 1850. I'll, I'll put the actual date on the screen because I, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> and it turns out that, yes, it was invented as of the date that this was published, but I looked up some examples and they're really pretty, but they're way, way out of my comfort zone and also use techniques that I have no idea how to do. Um, so at some point I will be learning them, um, case in point here. So I did find one, one example that I was like, I can do that. I'm comfortable with doing that. And that is a very standard binding using book cloth and paper with lovely little book cloth corners. Um, I can do that. I'm not worried about that. So um, I guess we'll just get started. I folded the pages off camera, sorry. <laughs> so I've got those right here. Nice little skinny guy very small. Um, it's going to be a teeny tiny book. So we're doing the design portion first. <laughs> so I have a giant tube full of paper. Mm -hmm. Love paper. Paper's like one of my favorite things. I'm going to regret getting this all out so much. Right, that's all. So this, this doesn't look very intimidating. However, <laughs> there's like, there's got to be like 15 different sheets in there. So we've got more may have a paper problem. Um, I'd like it to look like halfway period accurate. It's only gonna be like halfway. <laughs> Let's be honest. So let's hope that I've got something here that isn't pale um, because right as I'm filming this we are in ye old COVID times. So there's um it's kind of hard to get certain things. Paper is not on everybody's priority list right now. <laughs> so I am trying to use what I've got. I have this, which is kind of fun. Um, we could treat it as like a, like a spell book for, for clothes where you, you use the, the stuff in it to make clothes. That's really dorky, but this one might work. I'm making a gigantic mess. Um, <laughs> I think we might go with the black with the moons and stars and pretty stuff like that because it's gorgeous and I love it. Look at that. Um, so I'm gonna put all this paper back away since I just unrolled literally every sheet of handcrafted paper that I own. Yay! Um, so we'll we'll deal with that. All right, so now we're on the adventure of picking out some book cloth. This is not a tutorial, by the way. <laughs> you couldn't tell. Um, we're just going on a little adventure. So we only have three choices for book cloth. I just have to figure out which one doesn't look terrible. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with gray. Cool. Okay, okay so 
first thing I'm going to do now that I have picked out sort of the general idea of what everything's going to look like, um, I'm going to start sewing the pages together. Okay, so here I am measuring where the holes need to go that I'm going to poke with a small awl on the signatures. I'm doing two at the top and two at the bottom, spaced approximately one and a half inches apart. And here I am just poking the holes with set all, making sure to go all the way through the pages. Um, I have a piece of wood underneath the book so that I don't accidentally either stab myself or poke way too far. One thing you want to make sure of is that you have your pages lined up really nicely so that your hole goes all the way through the creases on all the pages in your signature. And now I am measuring out a length of linen thread to thread my needle and to sew my pages together. I'm using the kettle stitch, which I will link a proper tutorial to in the description below. Um, I do not wax my linen thread. That is a personal choice. Um, typically I don't have an issue with it getting damaged when I'm sewing because of the size of the awl holes that I poke. So I'm just starting at the bottom from the outside of the spine on the first signature and <laughs> having a bit of a struggle and then pulling that thread on through. And I do not tie a knot at this point um, as is tradition with the kettle stitch. And now I have magically jumped through time and am just sewing the last signature on. making sure to tie a knot between the signature and the one before it, and pulling that taut so that there's no wiggling. And just one more time, pulling it tight and tying it off with one final knot through the lovely mass of thread that is now on the spine. and then I'm going to clip it. Okay, so I'm just going to glue my spine now. I use a big vat of PVA. So I'm just gonna make sure these ends are lined up real quick before I slap the glue on there. Um, I'm gonna just gently tuck these on here so that they can get glued down nicely. And I'm just gonna start gluing. So now that I've got my spine glued, I'm just going to make sure that it lines up on both ends and that we don't have any crookedness to it before I press it. So I'm just going to take this sheet of wax paper I put down and I'm going to gently put it over the top and then I have a massive pile of books behind me in this bookshelf um, that you can't really see. So I'm going to gently place books on top of it. As you can see, I have a pile of books here. Underneath it is my book block. So um, I'm going to be waiting for that to dry. And um, I like to wait for those to dry overnight um, because it's not fun trying to put a book together when the, the spine is still tacky. Uh, it kind of sucks actually. So um, I will be doing that um, probably tomorrow. It is now tomorrow.
which is a Monday, unfortunately. I'm very tired. <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, I'm gonna be trying to finish my bookbinding project today, um, if, if I can. Um, uh, I was able to check on my book block today. It has dried very nicely. It is, it is very even and straight, which is nice. Um, I think I'm going to just jump right in and start working on the measuring portion. So math is about to happen. Okay, so I figured out that I want the cover height to be 8.75 inches. Um, <clears throat> I figured this out because the height of the book block is eight and a half, um, because I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, and I want there to be an eighth of an inch on either side of the, the top and the bottom. Now I'm just trying to figure out what I want the width of it to be. This is the part I always have trouble with, um, because you have to account for, this is just an example, a terrible one because it's a rounded spine book, but, so this is an example, um, you have this nice little groove here, um, and you have to account for that space-wise, so there can't actually be board there. So the board actually ends a little bit before the bound edge of the book, like the sewn edge, um, and then it extends past the edge just a little bit. I have a copy of something I found previously that I can use an example as an example. Because I'm always, I'm always terrible with this particular part. <laughs> So I'm just going to measure this. Um, so we want five and three eighths of an inch. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so that's the block done. Um, the height of the spine is a lot easier, or the, the spine is a lot easier. You just take basically the, um, the thickness of your spine and you cut just a smidge past on either side um, and then make the height the same as the cover height. I'm going to make my spine be 8.75 inches by, I wish I used a metric more, um, 3 eighths. Okay, so now that I've got my measurements, I'm going to start cutting everything out um, and then I get to have the supreme joy of figuring out the measurements for the papers, but um, I'm going to do the cardstock and the book board first because the book board is going to take five ever. Okay, so it didn't turn out that I actually had proper cardstock for this, so I'm cutting up a file folder for my spine. First I'm just going to trim off this funky shaped edge, and I already have measured what amount I need as far as the planning goes and I'm just measuring on the folder how wide my spine needs to be and I'm going to cut that little sliver off. needs is to be checked against the book block to make sure that the width is correct and here I am just measuring it to get the length correct and cutting that. And now just checking my measurements against my book board and measuring that preparing it to cut it. This does take approximately forever just because of the density of the cardstock or of the book board and the fact that I'm using a rotary cutter. So that's gonna happen about 50 more times before it actually, you know, cuts. All right. And I'm just checking the width. making sure everything fits correctly. 
and now I am measuring out how wide of a piece I want to cut off of this first cut. And about to just slide that down and do that about 50 more times. And I actually had to flip it over because of how thick the board was. I did measure on both sides so that I could account for that. And now just checking some measurements so that I can measure out my book cloth. And getting that cut too. measuring where my corners need to be for my book cloth corners, uh, making a little template as it were, and drawing an outline around that just so that I can get the shape correctly, and cutting that out. And now that I've got it cut out, I'm just going to have to cut three more. <laughs> And here I appear to be talking to myself, which is very lovely. And now I'm just marking out on the, my little template so that each corner can be glued in exactly the same place. Okay, so if my, my book cloth is going to extend, if this is the book, we've got one and a half inches here. So then whatever is left is what the paper needs to cover. 4.75 is what it will be. I'm going to have to probably fold this to be able to cut it. To explain that more in depth, the reason that I'm needing to fold it is because my paper cutter actually is only 18 inches tall. It's kind of a problem because of the fact that the paper is about 20 inches. So I'm folding it gently up and cutting it. And also having to trim the edges because it is a handmade paper. Here I'm just measuring exactly how long this piece needs to be. And then trimming off a very small edge so that it isn't uneven. On to gluing. So first thing that you glue down is your book cloth. There's a little bit of measuring that has to happen first though. Okay, so the first thing I'm measuring is actually a channel for the spine to go in. Um, you can see me doing that here and using my <laughs> book board as a straight edge instead of a normal ruler. So there's the channel for the spine. That's gonna go on there. And now I'm measuring a small channel for the, um, the cover to actually be able to open and close. gluing on the spine. So we've got our spine laid out. It is on. Um, that's pretty much it for that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue to um, my book cloth again where the boards are supposed to be and glue my boards down. So now I'm just going to be gluing this part down. Um, so you just apply glue to the little flappy. There's a name for it. I don't know. I'm just going to call it the little flappy. So you apply glue to the little flappy and what I do and what you should do is press the center in first because you need to give um, 
these side bits room. So I press everything in and then I pull these sides down as I'm pressing them. So then we're going to do it on the bottom. So we're just going to press this one in just like we did the top one and then pull these up since you know it's facing the other way. If I pulled them down it would just end up bad. So that is the that part. So it's already starting to look like a book. Look at that. So we're going to just do this. I'm going to leave that out for a second. We're going to let it dry for a minute. Um, and in a minute, I'm going to put the paper on. So we're going to see if this lines up okay. Which I guess I can only do from this side. So we're going to just put this down. We're going to put the paper down and we're going to see if there's enough. There's enough room to fold everything. So we are good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply glue now. Um, I actually bought specific brushes for gluing because I don't typically use ones with this large of a tip. This is a filbert brush, I believe. Oh. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this and this is always the scary part. Um, so we need this cut to be further up. And that, and we're almost good. And there we go. So now I'm gonna flip this, smooth it down. And some people will use a bone folder for this. I actually like to use the back of my hand because um, I've had experiences where the bone folder would actually very lightly poke holes in the paper. And now I have to think about my corners. Thought I could get away with not thinking about them for a little bit. But here they are, just staring at me. So I'm thinking I may just glue them after I, I'm just gonna glue them after I do the covers. Someone's probably screaming at me going, no, don't do it, but I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna gently slice my corners away. So what this does is make it so that the corners look really clean when you fold the paper. Um, because otherwise you end up with this like crumply looking, squishy looking corner, which I am not a fan of. So we're going to start gluing these. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to just apply a little bit of glue to my lovely little corner, press him in, and proceed to get glue all over my finger. I'm just gonna, once again, I'm actually not just folding the paper, I'm pulling it towards the inside of the book so that I get these really nice, clean edges. Once again, I'm just kind of pushing, not pulling this time because it's going away from me, but I'm just gently, well, technically I'm pulling, pulling up with my thumb. And then we just do a little extra on the corner just to make sure that it lies flat. I'm just gonna kind of rub my fingers together to get any last vestiges of glue off of them and we're just gonna make sure that I didn't just schmutz up my cover real bad which it looks like we're good so here we go thus far it's pretty uh it's pretty shiny which I'm a fan of we'll do the corners now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue down the triangle sections of the the triangles of the triangles I'm gonna glue those down. So, applying glue. And then I'll line them up with the corners of the book. I guess we're gonna do this one first because it just makes sense to my brain. So we'll just press that. And we're gonna let those kind of dry a little. Fun fact, I'm a mess. So I'm gonna let those dry for a little bit. Um, before I finish gluing them down because I don't need them shifting all over and gluing up the cover again. Um, so that's, that's fun. Okay, so I have taken a couple of minutes and I'm going to just glue these corners down 
same method as I did with the paper where I do the out the outer like corner corner and then I'll do the sides and my kitty is coming to say hello hello Nar I will show him later I can sense that he's hungry and he's pestering me now which is to be expected do you want dinner dinner yeah just wait just wait a minute I'll make sure to show him so that it just doesn't sound like I'm like some crazy person sitting there meowing to herself I mean it's happened let's not kid ourselves but um it's not happening now there is actually in fact a feline in the room so this is what it looks like so far all we have to do now is get the pages in and then fold the little like crease guy here so I'm just gonna put this in here and make sure that it oh it doesn't line up right <clears throat> well that's why we check right if I take exactly I want to say a quarter inch off of every single one exactly a quarter inch it should fit fine got two down and some amount to go all right we are trimmed we are pretty dang even i think we might be all right um so i think that'll do you can see there is now a lip on both sides if i'm careful with how i glue this it will be pretty much exactly how i wanted it to be so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to plop a bunch of glue on this back page. This is the back page. I have now flipped it upside down because I'm crazy. You actually don't glue all the way to the spine. I almost just did because I wasn't paying attention. Seems to be a theme of today, huh? So we're gonna flip this because this is actually our back page. We are going to very carefully, very, very carefully, slightly less carefully than I intended. Oops. We're gonna very carefully place this so it's right up against the edge where it was supposed to be and then we're gonna just once again I do it with the back of a finger or the back of my hand we're gonna just start smoothing everything out you can do this with a credit card some people say or you can do it with a bone folder that ended up pretty much lined up how I needed it to so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this piece of wax paper in here to protect the second page first page second page whatever the page so what we're going to do now is we're gonna open this back up we're gonna plop this guy under here i'm gonna glue the crap out of this page i'm gonna put so much glue on here just like we did the first one okay moment of truth we're gonna fold this over we're gonna make sure it lines up nicely. We're gonna press on it just a little bit, just enough to get the page to, uh, the cover to kind of take the page with it. And then we're gonna smooth it. So we're gonna actually fold this now because it's got glue on one side. I'm just gonna keep folding it and folding it until I'm done folding it. And now we have a book. It is done. It just needs a good press overnight. Um, there was one more step I have to do actually while I'm thinking about it. So we're gonna actually open it up. I know this seems odd, but there's a purpose to this. And what it's doing is making it so that when I open it, it will actually like lie flat and look nice instead of being weird. So we've got this instead of potential other situations. <laughs> Oh, there is one thing I need to do, and I should use a bone folder, but I'm actually going to use the end of my paintbrush. We're going to just take, we're going to make that crease that I was talking about earlier. Just going to give it that nice little crease all the way down on both sides. This is like the, the low tool version. Hello, there's a face. It's my face. Hello. Yes, there's a face. Okay, so 
I have my book here. It is ready to get pressed. I'm gonna put um, another layer of wax paper around the outside that is clean so that when I press it, um, the glue does not get on any of the other books since I don't have a real book press yet. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I will be back tomorrow to show you the final product. Um, so have a wonderful evening and I will be back with a book. Well, that's it. Um, here is the book. It smells like a book. <laughs> so I plan to do at least a few sewing projects from this specifically. I mean, I would think I would considering I just bound it. Um, if you enjoyed watching me bind this little guy, go ahead and give the video a like and I will be back with more uh, book binding and sewing. So feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of that. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy Halloween if you celebrate Halloween and happy fall. <laughs>